Hey everyone, Dockwell here, and welcome to another one of my Dota 2 hero guides. Today we're going to be taking a look at Ursa. Ursa is a carry hero, almost exclusively a carry hero, and that's because he does a lot of burst damage really quickly, and he's one of the best one-on-one -on -one heroes in the game. Now what I mean by that is if you put him up against any other carry or hero in general, he will probably win that matchup one-on-one. -on -one. And we'll see why in a second when we look at his abilities, but he does a lot of burst damage, like I said, very quickly. Now, usually when we talk about burst damage, we're talking about Lion's Finger of Death or Lena's Laguna Blade, something like that. Spells that do a lot of magical or pure damage very quickly within, you know, a few seconds or kind of the duration of any one stun. But the difference between those spells is, you know, they only scale so far. Ursa does a lot of burst damage that scale with his right clicks. And so that's kind of what makes him a viable carry, as we'll see in a bit. Because of that, he's very good in the laning stage. He can be very aggressive. He can, you know, it's not just like other carries where you just want to get your farm. You can do that, but you also can have a lot of kill threat on the enemy. Similarly, in the early game or mid game, Ursa can and often does want to participate with his team, to take towers, to take team fights, but also he can take Roche earlier than almost any other hero, and he can do it solo because of the nature of his abilities. And like I said, we'll take a look at that in a second, but those are some of Ursa's strengths. Now, we can get into kind of some of his weaknesses, but it's sort of, you know, a double-sided coin here where obviously the, the strengths and the weaknesses are very similar, where Ursa obviously can burst people down very quickly, like I said, but then that also offers the weakness of if he doesn't do that or if he isn't able to do that because there's a hero that's very tanky or let's say there's a hero that has a lot of illusions so he can't just single target um, them or can't find them very easily. That can be a problem for Ursa. He might jump in, use all of his abilities, all of his uh, physical damage on one person, one hero, not kill them, not do enough damage, and then he's kind of you know scrambling to see what to do next. And so that is part of what makes Ursa strong, but also a little weak, is that he can be countered by being kited, he can be countered by illusions, he can be countered by surviving his burst damage, and he can also be somewhat countered because he's not very good at taking towers. So although he can kill heroes very quickly, none of his abilities really give him any innate tower pressure. So although Ursa is a very good hero early on, and he can still scale into the late game, he's not necessarily one of the best carries overall late in the game. He's just extremely strong early, he can have a really good laning stage almost against anybody, and he's also very powerful in accelerating his team through the game early and mid game, helping them fight, helping them take towers, helping them take Roche, where sometimes you have other carries where you know they just want to farm all game, they're not really relevant until 20-30 minutes in. That's definitely not Ursa. So now that we understand Ursa generally and what makes him a good carry hero, we can take a look at his abilities and see how they work and what allows him to do a lot of burst damage quickly, like I was talking about. So first we're actually going to take a look at his two abilities in the middle here. The first one is Overpower. Now what this does is when I click it, he does that little animation and he actually gets a 6 over his um, tooltip here, a little buff, and it's ticking down. It only lasts for a certain amount of time. But it gives this 6 number, and that means that when I attack this dummy, I do 6 attacks really quickly. And as you can see, this is the normal attack speed, which we can increase, obviously, with, with items and stuff. But this ability, Overpower, just allows me to do a lot of attacks really quickly. And as you can see, the cooldown is generally pretty low. So you can use this multiple times in team fights, and that allows him to dish out a lot of damage very quickly. But that's not the only spell that facilitates this. His third spell, or the second one we're going to look at here, Fury Swipes, is actually key to allowing him to do a ton of damage. And it's pretty much what allows him to take Roshan very quickly and very early on as well. So what this does is every attack does increased damage. So as we see over this dummy target here, every time I hit the dummy target, this number increases. And basically, we can see this last hit counter, which is basically the last attack I did and how much damage that's doing. Every consecutive hit does more damage. So let's say I stopped here for a second. This is counting down. It only lasts for a certain amount of time, but even if it's like almost gone completely, if Ursa attacks again, it refreshes the count all the way back to the top. So essentially, you can do basically infinite damage to anybody. Like if I just sat here and let this 
Ursa attack this dummy target forever, this last hit counter would just go, it'd probably like crash the game eventually. Um, but yeah, so that pretty much allows Ursa to do infinite damage. So when you go into Roche, Roche is very tanky, you can get a lot of stacks up and be doing a lot of damage to Roche extremely quickly. So these two spells are pretty much the key to the hero. It allows him to do a ton of damage really quickly by having very fast right clicks, but also doing more damage with every consecutive hit. Now, we're going to go back and take a look at his first skill, Earthshock. And what this does is this allows Ursa to jump forward. And in an AoE, you see an Earthshock come out. And what this does is it does damage and slows enemies. So we'll see this axe here. He's walking. We click Earthshock. It does a little damage and it slows him down. Now that's obviously good because it allows you to stick onto enemies, allows you to slow them down so you can keep attacking them more and more, do more and more damage. But the other benefit it has is it allows Ursa to be slightly more uh, evasive, slippery, uh, maneuverable. As we can see here, you can actually use it to jump over cliffs. So we'll turn free spells on there. I can jump over um, this cliff both ways. And I can kind of, you know, just get out of harm's way a little bit quicker because I'm jumping forward and I'm slowing the people around me. So it allows him not to get kited and it also allows him to be a little more elusive as well. So it's just an added benefit for him to help enable his other spells and skills, but also make him a little more survivable. Now, speaking of survivable, this last spell, his ultimate, is called Enrage. Now, what Enrage does is... It basically just makes him extremely tanky, unkillable even, for a short amount of time. You click the button, he turns all red, he enrages, and what that does is it makes him take 80% less damage, as well as all stuns do 50% less. And I don't just mean damage, I mean if a stun lasts for a second normally, it would only last for half a second. So basically, you know, he can run in, jump on somebody, do a ton of damage really quickly, well, let's say he doesn't kill them, or he knows, you know, you can tell by just you know what the enemy team's going to do, that they're going to use all their spells on you to stop you from hitting this guy. Well, you click this, and there's almost nothing they can do for that short amount of time. Now, here at level 2, it only lasts for 4.5 seconds. Max, it lasts for 5. But, you know, it's only 5 seconds, but that's a lot of time for them to waste a lot of spells. There's pretty much nothing they can do to you. They can stun you, but only for a very short, yes. brief period of time. And it really just helps him be survivable. Let's say you commit into a fight, you do a lot of damage, you kill one hero, you want to back off real quick, you press Enrage, you kind of predictably see that the enemy is going to use a lot of spells on you, you click Enrage to make sure, you know, that you don't die, those kinds of things. So, it's pretty much Ursa's get-out-of-jail-free card. It's what allows him to tank a lot of spells, um, it, it's, it's what allows him to be survivable enough to do a lot of damage. And he's generally not super squishy, so although he can get killed easily if none of his spells are on cooldown, his Enrage is kind of his uh, safety card. It's what allows him to jump in, you know, do a lot of damage really quickly, like I said, and then make sure that he's not just instantly getting burst down right after that. So now that we understand Ursa generally, and we know what his abilities do that enable him to be a carry as well as do a lot of burst damage, we're going to take a look at a replay here where Mason is playing Ursa. So the first clip we're taking a look at is actually a laning stage clip. So we'll press play. Now what I want you to notice is that he's preemptively hitting the creeps here. So what that does is it allows him to get all the last hits, even under tower, to make sure he's doing enough damage. So right here we'll see that. He preemptively hits it because he know that with fury swipes, every hit is going to do more damage. So he doesn't really want to risk, you know, the small chance that the creep doesn't have enough health so that he can, you know, he'll miss the last hit because it's right at that weird range where he can never really get the last hit without preemptively hitting it. So anybody that knows how to last hit under tower knows that sometimes it can be very difficult. Well, what you can do on Ursa, and we'll rewind again to show you here, go back a second, is that you can preemptively hit them so that they do, you do more damage on the final hit. That way, you can make sure you're securing creeps. Now, you can do this not just under tower, but you can do this in general. If the enemy hero has a lot of damage and seems to be out last hitting you, what you can actually do is hit the creep once while it's pretty high HP, and then hit it again once it's you know down lower to get the last hit. And usually, if you have enough points in Fury Swipes, you'll do more damage than your opponent because obviously this is adding damage every time. So essentially, increases your damage for the last hits every time. 
Now the other thing I want you to notice right here is how aggressive he is against the centaur. Centaur is usually a hero known for being pretty tanky, hard to take down. But as you watch the laning stage, Mason obviously is going for all the last hits and trying to play generally, you know, safe when there's a ton of creeps and he wants to get the last hits. But every time that Ursa can have threat onto the centaur, he pushes it aggressively. So we'll see. Obviously, he's looking for the last hits. He's kind of, but he immediately sees no last hits to get run right at the centaur, and centaur has to back away because he knows that obviously his support's there, you know, warlock is there to do damage too, but Ursa does so much damage that even an, a tanky hero like centaur can't withstand it after he gets clicked a bunch. So anytime that Mason has the ability to be aggressive, he will be aggressive, and that's why Ursa is an extremely good laner because he's good at getting last hits like we talked about before, like here. Any time that he can get aggressive, he's going to get aggressive. Now, obviously, you need to play safe, you need to be smart, and that just comes with time, but the heroes have to run away from him. They know with every subsequent right-click, he's going to be doing more and more damage. And like I said, part of that is that the support is there to help, but a lot of that is just the threat from Ursa. Not a lot of carry heroes can be this threatening, or as threatening, as Ursa is right now. Next, we're going to take a look at a clip where Mason uses Ursa's ult at the perfect time. Now, this is still laning stage, mid-game-esque, and it's only really versus one hero. So this would happen probably a bunch of more times in this game. It'll happen a lot in all games where you want to predict and use your ult at the perfect time. But a lot of times, team fights can be chaotic. You won't always use it. But here, we can see a very isolated, perfect example. So we'll see that Ursa's going to run after the centaur. And now he sees the centaur about to stun and he instantly uses his rage. Now obviously the centaur stun is, you know, there's an animation on it, you can see it. We'll rewind a bit again to see it really quickly. Maybe we'll slow it down a little bit for you to see. So the centaur stun is kind of the perfect example because you can probably react to it when you see the animation come out. As we'll see here, you know, he sees Centaur lean back a little bit, about to stun, and he immediately presses the ult. That way, you know, that stun only lasts for a fraction of the second, or 50% of the time, and now, you know, he can finish killing. So that, in general, is the perfect example, isolated, of how you want to use your ult. Now, in team fights, there will be a lot more spells, a lot more that you have to consider when using that ult. But that's kind of what you want to do. Make sure that you're tanking the spells, you're tanking damage, you're tanking stuns, and they are much less effective when you have your ult on. So it's kind of one of these things where you want the heroes or you want the enemy to cast them on you when you have your ults up, and you want to cast your ult at the perfect time to allow that to happen. It's kind of like right before you predict it, you predict right before they're going to use it, and that's when you click your ult, because it's it's instant. So it's kind of, they're in the animation of doing it, they're about to do it, you kind of know that they're going to want to stun you at this point, so that's when you press R at the perfect time. That's a skill, it's something that comes with obviously playing a lot of Dota games and knowing the heroes you're up against, but it's one of the keys to playing Ursa, it's the key to using his ult. So now this is a mid-game sequence that I want to show you really quick here. We see that Ursa's still farming. He is still a carry, so you generally still want to farm on the hero and only look to get involved when you need to. It's just that he will get involved more. Now we see the enemy will go on him. Thankfully he has a sentry there. And before he gets stunned, he uses his ult to make sure that the stun doesn't last as long and he can get out. Now, they still go for him. They still doom him. But thankfully, his team responds, and he can survive. Now, if he didn't ult at that perfect time, if they didn't have the sentry ward there, that he could see that, he probably would have died. But, thankfully, he was able to get out, he was able to use his ult, he was able to use his earth shock to run away pretty quickly, and they ended up killing the morph and then living. So that was a lot of his team, but also him using the ult correctly. But the other key thing that I want you to see here is that it's 18 minutes, they just took a team fight. One of the heroes on the enemy is dead. They obviously use Doom, so that's some cooldowns. But they immediately just go right into Roche here. And it really is only two of them taking Roche. And look how quickly it goes down. It's only, what, 20 seconds maybe that they kill Roche completely with two heroes? And honestly, the Mars didn't do any damage really. He barely did any damage at all. He was just there to tank because Ursa was kind of low health from the team fight. 
And now, Mason has a... Mason has an Aegis, and that play that the enemy team just made to try to kill him, it's pretty much not possible anymore, because if they tried to do the same thing, last time it didn't even work, and this time, he would die and just come right back to life and be able to participate in the team fight. So, that's one of the keys to Ursa as well, is even if he might not be the strongest immediately, he can get that Aegis really quickly, really early on, almost by himself, if not by himself, and that allows you to play way more aggressive, it allows you so much more advantage in the game um, to get that, that key Roche, that early Roche. And now, Mason can pretty much just farm up and do whatever he wants on the map. Um, as long as he's not super out of position where they can kill him twice without his team responding, he's pretty much free to do whatever he wants. And we can see that obviously they did just kill the Doom, but it's just the Doom. The rest of the team is still up, and Ursa, Mason just feels like he can do no wrong. He There's nowhere on the map that he can't go really now. He's cutting through the enemy jungle, he's going behind the tier 1, he's playing extremely aggressive because he knows he has that Aegis, he does a lot of damage, he's a huge threat. And from here, they really just snowball the game. So one of the last things we're going to look at here is actually how to use your overpower effectively. We looked at Enrage and how to use that relatively effectively. Obviously Earthshock you can use it, you know, just to catch people, slow people. It's pretty straightforward. But actually, overpower, there's a little bit of a technique to it. And you'll see why in a second. So let's just watch the sequence. We'll just play it at normal speed. We see that he has overpower. It's actually he's 25, so now it's 9 instead of 6. But look that every time he doesn't have it anymore, he basically uses it again. And we'll watch him actually here for a while. He has nothing to hit. He's actually smoked up. He's not hitting creeps. He doesn't hit these creeps. He's not doing really anything with his overpower. It was almost gone there. If we just actually, we can rewind for one second. It was kind of halfway done. And you'll see he uses it again. Well, you're wondering, well, why does he do that? Why is he using his overpower, you know, again, even when he's not hitting anything? And really the reason is not just for the overpower itself, but for the cooldown. Because what he wants to do is he wants to have the overpower available, but also off cooldown for when a fight starts. So right here, you'll see the perfect example. He had it, but it was also off cooldown, so he can use two in a fight. So I don't know if you saw that. We'll actually rewind here a second. We'll rewind. We'll go to half speed. So you see he has it queued up. It's about 75% of the way um, available still. Only a few seconds left, and a team fight's about to break out here. So it's off cooldown. He still has the whole overpower. So he uses a full nine hits now, because he's level 25. On him, he queues it up again and gets nine more hits on the Doom, and actually kills the Doom basically full to zero with his second. So he zoned out the Centaur, because the Centaur basically couldn't take any more damage or else he was going to die. And then he full to zero the doom with his burst damage with another nine hits and then we see obviously they pretty much win the fight from there he's able to go on to the other heroes kill the morph and the enchantress and everything and gets a triple kill there and that's one of the reasons why he was able to do that is because he queued up his overpowers and was waiting for a fight to happen now it's not always going to be perfect, obviously, and he's a really good player, so he knows what he's doing, but the key is you want to make sure your overpower is always on, but that it's on cooldown as well, especially late in the game. Now, mid-game, you don't want to always be doing that because you might have mana problems, so that's something to consider, but this late, we see it's 38 minutes into the game, he pretty much wants to be always having overpower on while also having it off cooldown so we can use it twice immediately after the first one is done. And that, my friends, is my Ursa guide. If you have any questions or comments, obviously leave them below. Please like, subscribe, comment, all of those things. It really helps a lot. I hope to be bringing you at least one guide of all the heroes in the near future, and I hope to be doing more as as uh, time goes on, so if you have any suggestions or a hero that you would like to see, please let me know, and I'll try to do that earlier. Um, I hope you like these, obviously, like I said, and so um, I look forward to making ones for you in the future. Thanks, and see you next time.